Hey guys, before I get started on today's video, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Travis Spiva. Travis is a bus nut that has basically recreated Puria Charter's entire fleet, the company that I work for, in model buses that is. Just look at these details that Travis has put into these models. This is absolutely incredible. I, I mean, I don't think I can find a single detail that's not exactly like the way the actual Puria Charter buses look in real life. So Travis is actually a part of a Facebook group called Model Bus Fan Club, which is where I found all his work. He posts his pictures of all of his work on there, so go check it out. It's a private group, so I think you have to request to join it before you can see any of the pictures. But anyways, I'm so impressed. Thanks for representing Puria Charter, Travis, and you're doing it well. I appreciate it. Hey, what is going on, all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Hi, James. I'm John, and this is my new-to-me H341 Prevo. And if you're watching this video, you too are part of the Motor Coach World. Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. I didn't realize how many drivers and bus companies use my videos as educational tools to help get new drivers started and orientated. Uh, I've gotten so many messages from drivers and bus company owners and managers alike that have told me that my videos are a good resource for training needs, which is absolutely awesome. I'm glad they're doing some good out there. Now, I can't tell you guys how grateful I am to hear this kind of stuff. Kind of brings a tear to my eye. I am immensely gratified. Well, not too long ago, I made a video about 10 things that coach bus drivers pack in their travel bags. It was as much fun as I had making that video. I did get a lot of comments from you guys to make another video more focused on what I would personally suggest that a new driver should take with them when they go out on bus trips and when they start their career. The basic essentials that a driver should not go on a bus trip without, basically. Now, keep in mind that every company and driver has different needs depending on the type of trips and rules that their company has. So what I would consider basic essentials as far as what bus driver gear is may not be the same to you. And on top of that, my list of bus driver gear that's essential is pretty extensive. So I can't really list all of them in this one video because this video would end up being over an hour long. While I know that some of you out there would actually sit through an hour long video of me talking about buses and bus related topics, I would personally just feel guilty if I took up an hour of your day with a bus video. So today I'm going to list four basic essential items that I wish I had before I started my career as a bus driver. And keep in mind that I've not been paid or sponsored to talk about any of the items that I'm going to list in this video today. And all the items that I mentioned in today's video will be linked down in the description box below so that you guys can go check them out for yourselves if you realize that it is something you need. Now over the years I progressed from one travel bag to another until today I found this giant monstrosity of a bag. Now please don't go pausing this video to add this bag to your cart just willy-nilly. I mean this giant bag is perfect for me because it serves not only as my bag for all of my driving gear but also a bag to carry all my camera gear. Now unless you guys are a vlogger or also a photographer or something of that sort, you really don't need to buy a bag this large. The Endurax camera drone hard shell backpack has all kinds of customizable compartments for not only the camera gear but also for my driving gear as well. It gives me a lot of room to bring a lot of stuff and organize it in a way that's easy for me to use. One drawback about this bag is that it's huge and with that I can't fit this bag next to me in the driver's area nor will it fit in any of the overhead luggage compartments on any make and model motor coach that I have driven. I'm talking about MCI, Prevo, Van Hool, Temsa, uh, any of those. That means that when I go on bus trips, this bag has to go down in the luggage bay after I get everything out of it that I need for driving. Unless I take up a seat, which I usually don't like to leave it in a passenger seat. Now, honestly, that makes me a little nervous to even keep it down in the luggage bay. I prefer to have my driving bag either next to me or in the driver's area above my head uh, in the overhead compartment. When I drive trips where my passengers bring a lot of luggage with them, I absolutely hate having my bag in the luggage compartment with theirs. I mean, oftentimes when you pull into hotels or airports with your passengers, the hotel or airport staff will automatically unload 
all the luggage under your bus out of courtesy and put them on those little ferrying carts or luggage carts to take to the airplane. Now, either that or the passengers will start to pull all their bags out on their own before you have a chance to keep an eye on yours. And on several occasions, even though I tagged my bag with a driver tag, I did have to stop someone from pulling my bag out and putting it on the luggage cart to be loaded on an airplane or a hotel lobby. And I'm glad I caught it and stopped them in time because during these busy moments when you as a coach bus operator are doing your job, it's so easy to forget to check that your driver's bag is still down there after all your passengers have left the bus. Also, another side note I wanna add about the Indirex camera bag is that I'm on my second one. Uh, the zipper failed on the first one. Uh, I bought just after one year of owning it. I reached out to their support team with a picture of the bag to see if they would replace it for me and I never heard back from them, so I don't know. But a really good driver's bag that I used to use before I started bringing camera gear with me on trips is the Swiss Gear 1900 ScanSmart backpack. This bag will fit on the overhead compartment of a coach and was the perfect driver's bag for me until I got into all this vlogging and making videos for you guys. I still use it today for other things and it's over six years old now and it's still working fine. A good flashlight is something I would never go on a bus trip without. I mean, I see a lot of drivers use their smartphones for flashlights, but to me, it's just not the same as having a nice flashlight handy. Now, I'm a simple kind of guy, and I like my flashlights compact and simple to use. Today, there are so many flashlights with all kinds of different flash patterns and illumination levels that you have to cycle through to get a nice solid beam of light. Now, some of you may like that kind of stuff, but as a motor coaster driver, I want my flashlight to turn on and turn off with one click of a button. The one I use is from a company called Skystead, and it's a very well-priced, durable, waterproof, and really bright for its size flashlight. Now, I like it so much that I bought several of them. One I take with me on bus trips, one stays in my truck, and one next to my bed at home. I've had mine for over six years now, and none of them have failed me. They also come with a lifetime warranty, so if it ever breaks, they'll replace it for free. The only drawback about this light is that it uses an uncommon battery. You can order these batteries on Amazon if you need to replace them. They're called 18650 batteries, and I bought two extra with a wall charger so that I can swap them out and leave the other one on the charger for when I need them. In addition to this flashlight, I also got a nice belt holster for it so that I can carry it at my side uh, at all times when I'm on a bus trip. The one I use is the Aerosoft Peak flashlight pouch holster, and it fits the flashlight uh, perfectly. At the time I'm making this video, Amazon shows that it's no longer available, but another brand of flashlight holder is basically the exact same holster is the uh, Livens Tactical Holster, which once again, I'll put the link down below if you guys want to check it out. Now, although some of you may consider this more of a fashion statement rather than essential bus driver gear, I personally love this combo. I've gone through so many belts and phone holsters over my coach bus operator career, it took me a while to really optimize my setup. I absolutely hate putting my cell phone in my pocket. I mean, on top of butt dialing everyone on my contact list, putting my cell phone in my pocket also resulted in a lot of scratches on my screen. So I started using phone holsters. Now the really fancy plastic ones would never last long. With all the luggage loading and walking up and down the aisles of the coach, it was only a matter of a week to a month before I would bump into an armrest of a coach seat and break the plastic uh, phone holster. So I decided to go with the leather ones. I mean, they're not as brittle and they have a lot of flex. And I've had this one for about five years and it's still with me. I also like the fact that the model I got has these little extra slots for cards on the side. They also come really handy for hotel keys on overnight trips. Now on top of the plastic phone holsters not lasting long, the leather belts I used to wear would get so worn over time. Also, the belt holes would get really deformed to the point that my belt would just break at that point. So my wife actually found these really cool nylon ratchet belts. There are no holes for you to push a pin through to hold your belt on, and it's all based on a ratchet system to buckle the belt. Now, I've had this belt for over four years now, and whether I get heavier or lighter, all I have to do is pull the belt a little tighter and the ratchet does the rest. And when I need to remove the belt, a simple push of the release lever instantly releases the ratchet and the belt comes right off. And because it's nylon, it always keeps to its color and will not fray or fade over time, keeping me looking spiffy behind the wheel. 
Now, some bus companies don't allow their drivers to mount their phones in front of them when they drive, so this may not apply to all of you drivers out there. Now, I use my phone for GPS guidance as well as traffic alerts when I'm behind the wheel of a coach bus. The app I use isn't anything fancy, it's just Google Maps. On top of traffic jam warnings, it does a great job giving me an estimated time of arrival to the destination so that I can keep my passengers informed along the way while all being hands-free. Now, if you're using a Bluetooth headset along with your phone, you can even set new destinations or ask about weather by speech so that you never have to take your hands off the wheel. But I couldn't do any of this without my phone mount. Now, from lots of trial and error over the years, I boiled it down to two criteria that my phone mount has to have. For one, it has to have a suction cup without the sticky adhesive um, on the back of the cup because we don't have assigned coaches uh, here in my company. So every time a driver or me finishes a trip, we all have to take all of our gear off the bus when we get back from the trip. And with some of the new sticky adhesive suction cups that they're putting on cell phone mounts uh, for vehicles, they are really hard to remove from the windshield. And not to mention, they leave really sticky residue on the windshield, which is horrible for the next driver to see when he or she climbs on board to drive the coach. Also, over time, the adhesive gathers so much dust and dirt particles from being in my bag and from mounting and dismounting it from different windows and surfaces, it just gets really nasty really quickly. My second criteria is that it has to be magnetic. I can't stand phone mounts where you have to push and pull the clamp every time uh, you want to attach or remove your phones. Whenever my passengers are boarding or disembarking, I always make sure that I'm standing at the bottom of the doorstep. It looks more professional that way, and it always allows me to assist passengers as they're getting on or off the coach if they need the assistance. But one thing that many people don't realize is that once your passengers start to board or disembark, you really kind of cut off from your driver's area until they're all on or off the bus. How many of you have forgotten to unlock the luggage bay doors of those D models by those little plungers on the bottom or even Van Hools where you have to push the button on the dash to unlock the bay doors and then your passengers basically start getting off and at that point you kind of have to push all the passengers on the steps back up the coach or try to get them to stop coming out so that you can squeeze your way back into the driver's area to release the bag doors so that your passengers get their bags. It's really embarrassing. Well, the same thing happens for my phone. I always wanna make sure I have my phone with me when I'm standing at the door of my coach. You never know when you'll need it. But that's why the first thing I do when I open the door to disembark my passengers is to grab my phone and walk off the bus first so that I can be down there to greet them and assist them. And when I get back on, I immediately remount my phone on the dash so that I can resume using it as a GPS. With all that said, I hated having to finagle and squeeze the phone mount so that I can get or reattach my phone, which is why I went magnetic. With this mount that you can get on Amazon, you can simply pull your phone off the mount when you need to and simply put it back on using one hand without having to manipulate any springs or levers or buttons. And the magnet is strong enough so that even on bumpy roads, my phone doesn't fall off the mount. Now trust me on this one, I went off-roading in my truck using these and my phone didn't go anywhere, even while I was jumping over sand dunes. The only downside is that you have to attach a metal plate using a two-sided adhesive to the back of your phone. And if you're using a case with lots of design bumps or textures on the back, the plate may not stick properly and fall off. Also, it kind of adds a permanent plate on the phone, which some of you may not like. Well, folks, those are four of the items that I wish I had before I started driving a motor coach. I'll be making more of these down the road uh, in between my other videos because I still have plenty of essential items left on my list. I hope this helps some of you incoming, new, or even experienced drivers out there when it comes to functionality over the road. And if you found other items or better varieties or versions of the items that I shared with you, please share it down in the comments below. I would love to read them. Folks, as always, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.